welcome to the podcast for reducing and enlarging formulas. And this is a relatively short podcast. I think I only have three questions because these calculations are actually very easy. Certainly compared to some of the other calculations we cover in this course, these calculations are certainly in no way difficult. But they are important. So there is one key idea, the idea of this factor method, that I want to be sure and cover with you that you understand. So, And a little bit of background is important to understand why I feel these kinds of calc simple calculations are still important. And that is that pharmacists may have to reduce or enlarge formulas for pharmaceutical preparations in their course of professional practice or their compounding activities. For example, many formulas in the United States Pharmacopeia NF are standardized for the preparation of a thousand milliliters or a thousand grams of product, which is not the quantity most pharmacies would need to prepare. Moreover, formulas from other sources may be based on other quantities. Therefore, it's important to understand that the need to prepare different quantities of a pharmaceutical product depends on the nature of your practice. Whereas only small quantities may be required in a community pharmacy, modest quantities in a hospital pharmacy, and even larger quantities in an outsourcing facility, very large quantities are often prepared and actually in the manufacturer of pharmaceutical industry. And in the latter case, hundreds of thousands of dosage units may be prepared in a single batch. Therefore, the most important idea is that the criterion that is most important, irrespective of the quantity to be prepared, is that the correct proportion of one ingredient to the other in a given formula must be maintained. Now, there are various methods that you can do these sorts of calculations, and they include a ratio and proportion, or dimensional analysis, and the factor method, all of which, all of these three different methods can be used to either reduce or enlarge a pharmaceutical formula. However, for many, the factor method is the simplest to use and is what we're going to exclusively demonstrate in this podcast. So with that as a background, let's get started with our first question. So the first question reads, from the following formula for 40 sertraline hydrochloride capsules, calculate the quantity of each ingredient needed to prepare 250 such capsules. Okay. Now, before we look at the formula, let's give a little bit of background for sertraline. Now, sertraline is a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, often abbreviated SSRI, and it's commonly used to treat depression and anxiety disorder in adults and was actually the second SSRI to receive FDA approval for treating obsessive compulsive disorder, or OCD, in pediatric patients. Several clinical guidelines have also described a role for SSRIs in, cheating ch in treating childhood depression. In addition, SSRIs like sertraline are considered first-line therapy for childhood anxiety disorders that require drug treatment. Now, in this formulation, each capsule would contain 7.5 milligrams of sertraline, which is a lower strength needed for a pediatric patient and is one that is not commercially available from the manufacturer and is justifies why a pharmacist might need to compound to prepare this product. So, with that as a background, let's go back and look at the formula. And I'll remind you, this is a formula that we have to prepare 40 of these capsules. And it states to use sertraline hydrochloride, 300 milligrams, silica gel, 6 grams, and calcium citrate, 4 grams. And so what I want to make sure before we go on is we rewrite some very important information is to remember this. Our original formula that we just read is based off of a quantity of 40 capsules to prepare. However, what we want to do is enlarge this formula to a desired quantity of 250 capsules. So this is an example of wanting to enlarge a formula that we have. So with that, I rewrote some of that information here. The first step that we're going to do, which is in this, uh, is this factor method, is to calculate an adjustment factor. And this is really the key for all of these questions that we're going to do in this podcast, is how to determine this adjustment factor. So the most important concept is this. So an adjustment factor is simply equal to taking the desired amount that we want to prepare. So this is the amount we are wanting now to prepare and dividing it by the amount actually stated in the formula. Okay, so the desired amount goes on top, this is what we want to prepare, and we divide it by the amount specified in the formula that we are using. So to use as a specific example for this question, I'll remind you that what we want to prepare is a batch containing 250 capsules. Our formula, however, is based on the preparation of 40 capsules. 
So if we take 250 and divide it by 40, we see that our adjustment factor is equal to 6.25. Essentially saying that we desire to make 6.25 times the amount specified in the original formula. So the next step is simply just to apply this adjustment factor to each individual ingredient. So we'll go through these one at a time. So if I start with my sertraline hydrochloride, I'll remind you that the formula called for 300 milligrams. However, we are making 6.25 times that amount. So let's take that factor and multiply it by the 300 milligrams and say for this batch that I want to make of 250 capsules, I would need to use 1,875 milligrams of sertraline. Going on to silica gel, what it says in the formula, and again, the one thing I will warn you about these questions is you may need to be careful of the units. Certainly for sertraline, our units were in milligrams, but now for the other two ingredients, we're in grams. So it doesn't change the math, but be careful with your uh, units. So since silica gel we wanted was 6 grams, but we're making 6.25 times that amount, 6 times 6.25 would give us the 37.5 grams we need for our larger batch. And lastly, for calcium citrate, since the formula initially called for 4 grams, we'll multiply 4 grams times the 6.25 adjustment factor and see to prepare this we would need 25 grams of this product. And that concludes our first question. All right, well let's read the next question. It says, from the following formula, calculate the quantities required to make five pounds of hydrophilic ointment. So just a quick background. What we're preparing here is hydrophilic ointment, and that's an effective skin moisturizer that helps restore and protect very dry, damaged skin. Now this is a fragrance-free formulation that is emollient-based cream that helps soften and smooth areas with the petrolatum ingredient. Since it is an occlusive moisturizing ingredient, that actually helps attract and retain moisture in the skin. So this is a hydrophilic ointment base that we can use either on its own to help damage, help repair damage dry skin, or in our compounding practice could be used as a base that we will add other ingredients to. Either way, what we are doing here is needing to actually compound this hydrophilic ointment. So it goes beyond the scope of this podcast to address what, these, what the purpose of these individual ingredients are, but they are all important in the formulation of this hydrophilic ointment. So the ingredients include methylparaben, propylparaben, sodium lauryl sulfate, propylene glycol, sterile alcohol, and white petrolatum in the amounts given per gram in, by gram in the formula. The last ingredient, though, be sure to read that carefully. It says, and purified water, QSAD 1,000 grams. So I'll remind you, QSAD means add additional amount up to a total of 1,000 grams. So this formula gives us all of these specific ingredients in a recipe to prepare 1,000 grams of this hydrophilic ointment. But let's rewrite some information. So this formula is based off the preparation of 1,000 grams. But what we want to do is expand the formula to a desired quantity of 5 pounds. So as I warned you before, we're going to have to be careful with our units here, grams versus pounds. But take my word for it now that this amount, 5 pounds, is much larger than the 1,000 grams called for in the recipe. So we're going to need to expand this formula. So... Rewriting that information here, I'll remind you, the first step in any of these calcul in these calculations is to determine the adjustment factor. In this case, we are expanding it, so we need to know the factor by which we are wanting to expand our formula. So to do that, though, the, this has got a pre-step that we didn't have to do on the previous calculation because the amount we actually want to prepare, that is our desired quantity, is expressed in pounds. And our formula quantity was expressed in grams. So let's convert to the same units. So it makes sense to convert what we want in pounds to an equivalent amount of grams. So simply we'll start with what we desired quantity in five pounds, multiply that by the conversion factor that the, for every one pound there are 454 grams. So I put grams on top and pounds in the bottom so my units cancel. So if I multiply the 5 times the 454, I see that what I really desire is to prepare 2,270 grams of this hydrophilic ointment. Now that I know that, I can calculate my adjustment factor. And a reminder, we do that by taking the, the amount we desire to prepare 
and put it on top, and divide it by the amount called for in the original formula, which we said was 1,000 grams. So when we divide those two numbers, we see that what our adjustment factor is 2.27. That means we are wanting to prepare 2.27 times the amount called for in the original formulation. So the next step is simply to apply this adjustment factor to each ingredient. So I've listed all of the ingredients here, and this, these are solved the same way for all of them. So we're going to kind of just answer this in bulk. So I've listed all the individual ingredients and the amount called for in the original prescription. We're going to take that original amount and multiply each value, each weight, by the amount of the adjustment factor, which we said was 2.27. So we take each individual amount times 2.27, and we get the final amount that we would need to use in our formulation now to prepare 5 pounds of this uh, hydrophilic ointment. All right. Our last question is an example of actually reducing a formula. We've done two expansions. Now let's talk about how to reduce a formula using this same sort of methodology. So the, uh, the question reads, calculate the quantity of each ingredient needed to prepare 15 milliliters of the following ophthalmic solution. So just real briefly, the active ingredients in this formulation, this eye drop, are erythromycin lactobionate and dexamethasone sodium phosphate. This combination of erythromycin and dexamethasone is just used sometimes to treat various ophthalmic infections due to susceptible bacteria that are causing it. But this unique combination has also been shown to be particularly effective when some of the infection or irritation is due to exposure to things like cigarette smoke. So either way, it's not a commercially available ophthalmic solution, so it is a unique combination of drugs that we could compound. Now, going back to the formula, the problem is what we want to do is create enough for one patient, so we need 15 milliliters, but the formula we have is has the ingredients of erythromycin, dexamethasone, glycerin, and sterile water, but you'll notice going down to the bottom for sterile water, it is QSAD for up to a total amount of 100 milliliters. So the formula I have is to prepare 100 milliliters of this ophthalmic solution, but I don't need near that amount. I only need enough for one patient, which would be 15 milliliters. So I rewrote that information that the original formula quantity was based off 100 milliliters, but our desired quantity is only 15 milliliters. So we're going to need to reduce this formula. So to do that, rewriting that information, and remember we'll start with our Start by calculating our adjustment factor the same way we always do, by taking the desired amount that we wish to prepare, which in this case is 15 milliliters, and dividing it by the amount in the actual formula, which was 100 milliliters. And doing that, we get an adjustment factor of 0 0.15. That means compared to our original amount, we only want 0 0.15 times that volume. So we want a smaller volume than for each of those amounts than what are called for in the formula. So simply let's just apply that adjustment factor to each ingredient. So again, here is a breakdown of all of the individual ingredients. What we're going to do is multiply the amounts, whether they're in milligrams or milliliters, it doesn't matter. We're going to uh, multiply the amounts called for in the original formula by our adjustment factor. And when we do that, we'll see the values that we get here. And so, I, again, that kind of ends this podcast. These calculations aren't difficult. The key concept here is how to uh, basically calculate and use an adjustment factor by taking the amount that we desire, dividing it by the amount in the formula. Remember, this factor will be greater than 1 when we are needing to expand or enlarge the formula. Or it will be less than one if we're, in this example here, when we're needing to reduce the amounts because the desired amount is less than the amount standardized. So either way, the way that you apply by multiplying the adjustment factor time each amount of each ingredient is the same. And these are relatively straightforward, easy calculations. So hopefully you found this helpful.